Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna take a look at the Temgot 100 amp hour golf cart battery. And I see there it says Temgo. I don't know whether that's just, I think it's probably just a play on words. So maybe anything that makes golf carts go is a Temgo. Anyway, it's Temgot is the company that sent me this battery. Or maybe they're switching their company name to Temgo. I don't know, I, I don't know. So this is a 100 amp hour golf cart battery. Like I mentioned, it is 48 volts. This is lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And these batteries are pretty cheap for what you get with them. The kit comes with an 18 amp charger. They even have ratchet straps to hold it down into the go-kart if you need them. It also comes with a step-down converter. So for people that need to convert that power from 48 volts to 12 volts in their golf cart battery, they can use that converter. The last golf cart I did the lithium upgrade on already had one of those converters in it, but a lot of them aren't going to have it. So that's a nice thing to include with a kit. So there's quite a bit this battery is not going to have that some of the others would have. So Temgot also has some of the metal batteries where you can actually take it apart and service it if you needed to. I haven't reviewed one of those yet, but if you guys saw that Vatra battery that I reviewed, it had the same kind of construction where you could take the lid off and you could see the cells or even replace the BMS if you needed to. The Vatra was also 105 amp hours and it had a button to stop discharging. So yeah, a couple other frills that this is not gonna have. This is a pretty simple battery overall. You just have the positive and negative terminals here and I'll show you in a second, but you just have the plug for the screen on the side. Everything else is pretty basic. This does have Bluetooth though. And Temgot has their own app. I've already taken a look. It's actually a pretty decent app. So they say the charge rate on this is 50 amps continuous. They recommend lower than that. The charger they send with it is 18 amps. So that's pretty much what people are gonna be using. The continuous discharge on this battery is 200 amps, but it can go up to 300 amps for I think 30 seconds and then all the way up to 600 amps for like three seconds, something like that. But that's a little severe. I don't think anyone in a golf cart is gonna get anywhere close to 600 amps of discharge with this battery. This does have low temp protection, so there's no heaters in here, but it will cut off in the event you're trying to charge it below 32 degrees. So we'll start out with a discharge test and then I'm gonna pop this thing apart. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get into it, but I am gonna break this thing apart. <laughs> I guess I should say break it apart. I'm gonna break it apart and we'll see how everything looks inside the battery. All right, guys, so this is what comes with it. I figured I'd show you that first. Right down there is the terminal where you hook the screen in. That's pretty much it. Then you have positive and negative. And then these three boxes come with the kit. This first box here is your buck converter or step down converter. This will step down the voltage from 48 volts down to 12 volts, like I mentioned before. This next box here has screws for the positive and negative terminal. Some other mounting screws for the screen, the wire for the screen. Like I mentioned, the ratchet straps. And yeah, there's the screen itself. And the final box has the 18 amp charger in it. Not a bad kit, again, for the price you're paying. They put the extras in there like the straps, which I think is pretty neat. All right, I've got the supply charger they sent with it hooked up. I also have, with these clamps here, I've got EG4 charger on there too. So they're both 18 amp chargers, but that doesn't mean they're gonna charge at a continuous 18 amps. So I'll look at the app. We'll check it out here and see. And let me click on the battery here on the app. Yeah, so 33 amps, that's not bad. So won't be too long at that rate. I'll just leave it here a few hours, maybe only a couple hours. We're already at 50 something, right? Percent. And then we can set it on a discharge overnight, see what we can get out of this battery for amp hours. For the discharge test, I hooked the battery up to the EG4 Flex Boss 18 and set it to around 22 amps of discharge. And we ended up with 102 amp hours of total discharge capacity on the battery. I was busy popping the battery part and realized I hadn't even hooked the screen up yet to see what it looked like. And that's actually really nice. And it reminds me of the Vatver battery. So I'm gonna check and see if this is a JBD BMS. We might be able to see it when we pop it open. But yeah, it is absolutely empty right now because I did the discharge test on it. But I'll tell you what, it was not easy getting into here. Really had to manhandle it. Okay. These two foam blocks here went on the terminals. Probably because of all the prying and everything I did. 
and knocked them off. We've also got a foam block on top of the BMS and one on the far side. So that way in case the lid is smashed down, it won't make contact with anything. All right, so looking at it from the top, it is not the top. <laughs> this is another one of those batteries where the cells are actually situated on their sides. So we've got two six gauge cables coming from the negative. I would prefer to see four gauge. They did a great job protecting all the wire leads. And again, we have two six gauge wires going to the main negative terminal on the outside of the battery. And same thing, main positive come from down here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take this whole pack out if I can get the thing out. Let me take a look at the BMS before I do that. Here's the Bluetooth module here, but I don't see anything in here that says JBD BMS, but it does show up on the Overkill app. Maybe it's some of that writing. I really need to learn Mandarin. We've got two different temperature sensors. They're taped here and they're going to the top of the packs, which would be the positive side. So if you're looking at the battery from the top, the positive terminal is gonna be where the top of the cells are. Most people aren't gonna be putting this on its side for any reason, but you definitely wouldn't wanna put it, put it with the vents facing down. Now let's see if we can get this out of the actual case. Really wanna see the top of those cells. It looks like they're bolted cells instead of laser welded, which is really funny considering it's in a sealed case. It is absolutely glued to the bottom. Try as I might, I can't get it without cutting the box. So I'm gonna cut down the length right here and pry it off the bottom so we can take a look at the cells. Goodness me, I think almost there. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Gotcha. All right, so this battery wins the award for the hardest to get into of all the batteries I've tested by far. So this is the top of the cells here, which would be on the label side of the battery. So where it shows all the details is where the top of the cells are this resin board off and there we go we can finally see what we want to see here the bottom of that resin board which has foam for against the side of the wall also has foam on the entire back and then they have foam spacers off of the individual cells and we've got one temperature sensor here on this side of the pack and one all the way over here on that side of the pack and they've got all the wire leads protected in this shielding. All right, so you can see the code there. These are REPT cells. And I had the same issue with them when I checked them another time with the code reader where it didn't like the whole code but would tell me the manufacturer. So I don't see the, the nominal capacity on there. These are those ultra thin cells, very, very thin. Yeah, honestly, here's the thing about this build. I don't really see anything wrong with it. The wires and everything are in good shape. This is just very odd to me. Like I said, they even have that stress relief in the bus bars here, but they're not laser welded. That to me is sort of funny considering the build of this battery. I have seen classier builds, but everything is insulated all the way around on each side and they have all the wire leads protected. I guess the biggest thing, like I mentioned before, was the six gauge wire. I'd prefer to see a five or a four gauge wire in its place. Although if you look at an ampacity chart, that short of a run with that Celsius wire can handle that ampacity. I would just rather it not be right at its max when you're doing a continuous output. Although you could argue, on the other hand, who's gonna be using 200 amps continuous with a golf cart? The most you're going to see is a surge based off the testing I've done with another golf cart. You may surge at like 90 amps, close to 100 amps. Yeah, if you've got 200 amps pulling from the thing, you probably need another battery. <laughs> so these are right around 800 bucks. And it's not just the battery. You're getting a charger and all the little equipment that comes with it, straps and stuff like that. Man, that's hard to believe they can be that cheap. All right, we are charging right now. I'm gonna put the temperature sensor over here on the left in some ice. We'll see it if it shuts off the charging. The screen says we're at 32 degrees, 34 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So 
So if we could just get down a little further, it should shut off charging. It's kind of dancing around that 30 through, 33, 34 mark. That's pretty neat. It's probably hard to see from here, but you can see that one's showing 30 degrees. Look, it shut it off right there at 32 degrees. 30 degrees and the other temperature sensor is at 60 degrees. Yep, so charging is shut off. Right as it hit 32 degrees, it shut the charging off and you can see over here, I'll focus in, but it shows status is cut. Yeah, so this would be the temperature sensor like I mentioned on the other side, which is close to 60 degrees. And then the one on the left that I've got in the ice is 31. So let's warm it back up here, take it out of the ice. Breathe some hot air on it. Oh, and we're right back. That was really quick. Didn't take long at all. All right, guys. Well, that's going to about do it for this one. As you can see, this is completely busted to shreds, but I did prop this up here to give a little bit of a semblance of order to it. <laughs> but I'm glad we were able to get into it and take a look at the build quality. So the question, as always, when you're looking at any review or if you're looking for golf cart batteries is, is this worth buying? And the gist of it is it's a 100 amp hour battery. Pretty basic overall. I didn't see any blatant issues. The app is actually pretty nice. I do like the screen. It appears to be a JBD BMS. It does, the cold temperature protection, the low temperature protection does work. It passed the capacity test. Also, the cells are bound real nice. They've got that resin board in between everything. There's foam around everything. It's protected well. So it's a basic battery. They do have nicer batteries. Tem got Actually, Tem Go. Oh, I emailed with one of their reps, and he did say that they are switching the company name to Tem Go. So I guess it's a little easier on the eyes or something. So just erasing that T off the end. Anyway, they do have a, another version of a battery. I don't know if they're still selling that one, but sort of similar to the Vatver battery where it's 105 amp hours. So they've got a little bit of a different cells in there. And there's uh, the metal cap on the top where you can actually take the cap off. So those are actually quite a bit more money. These are pretty cheap. Like I said before, for what you get for it, you do get a 100 amp hour, 48 volt battery, but then you get the charger and all that with it too. It's almost tempting to use them for solar storage as cheap as they are. It'd be neat if they'd let you just shave off that charger and the straps and all that. If you could just get the battery itself, I've wondered if you get down into the $700 range. Anyway, it all depends on what you're looking for. Those metal designs are actually really nice because you can take the lid off, especially if you had bolted bus bars like this. You needed to replace anything or swap out the BMS at some point. But yeah, the price point's probably there for people. Also, something else to consider. I'm not really sure how their warranty process works with Temgot. I've dealt with some other companies before. I've gotten feedback from people on how they work. But yeah, if you guys have done any warranties with Temgot, let me know if you had any issues with them, how they are for communications as far as answering questions and stuff like that. So far, they've been responsive to me, but then again, they sent me a battery, so that does make sense. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's about it for this one. As always, I will put a link in the description to this battery here, and I appreciate you watching, and stay tuned. Oh, my goodness. Just let go. I won't tell anybody. Just let go. Ugh.